Hello, my name is Vanya, I am with 7Pace, and in this video we are going to be going over the Time Tracker configuration tool, how to configure it, where to find the options, but before we go into that, we are going to run through the Time Tracker on-prem installation. So let's run our installer right here. We select next and what we are going to do is we are going to click repair and what this will do is it will re remove time tracker and then reinstall time tracker. And essentially after the installation is completed we are going to land on the configuration tool step which is where you will usually land after an on-prem installation. So let's Go ahead and kick off our installation by clicking repair. We click yes to allow time tracker to make changes and the setup has been completed and we come to the configuration part of the time tracker configuration tool and we click next on this step we have the devops server settings and here you select whether or not you want to install time tracker on the local machine alongside DevOps server. So this would be if you're installing on the same server where your DevOps is installed. And the second option is if you want to install locally on this server and integrate with a remote DevOps server. So if you're installing like the second option, then you need to define the DevOps server URL here in this field. How are you going to find your DevOps server URL? Well, we have this handy tooltip that you can click and you see that you need to come to the Azure DevOps Server Administration Console, click the application tier, and then you can see your public URL and this is your DevOps server URL that you just need to copy and paste over here. And then we click Next and we come to the database settings page. Here, you will also need to define the server name. So this is the same server. And we select the Windows authentication and we select Next. Now on the Internet Information Server settings, we need to define the host name for the Time Tracker website. And the port, and we need to assign a certificate. So the host name is the domain name that's already assigned to your to this host computer so it will be the server name and the domain and the network host port the default is usually 8090 but here we've defined 444 and we are using 444 also if you notice that as I'm going through all these pages the data is getting uh, automatically filled this is because Time Tracker has already been installed on this server, so all this information is getting pulled from the registry if available. And these fields are available, so it's already pulled the port number, the host name, and the certificate. And the certificate, please keep in mind, it needs to be publicly accessible. We are not using a publicly accessible uh, 
certificate. We are using a self-signed because this is a test server, so we do not need the certificate to be publicly accessible. However, please do note that if you are not using a publicly accessible certificate, if you're using self-signed, self uh, this can create problems for access to Time Tracker. Then here, under this section, we need to select the application pool account. And what we are selecting is the application pool identity account. You can select any one of these uh, built-in accounts, or you can uh, specify your own custom account, entering the username, the password, and then this will be your application pool account. Now, this is all for the IIS settings. Let's click Next. And we get this warning that we are trying to use a self-signed certificate. And like I said, uh, this is only for internal use. The certificate should be publicly available. Let's click Yes. And here on this page, we define the service account. The service account user is used by Time Tracker to access DevOps. So for this reason, this user has to be a member of the Project Collection Administrators user group in DevOps. In case a user that is not a member of this group is set up as the service account, there could be issues with reporting because that service account user will not have all access to all the projects in DevOps and to all the data. So you will run into issues if you do not set the service account user as a user who is a project collection administrator. So please keep this in mind. It is a requirement. And here you can define to use a custom service account and you can define the username for the account or you can simply use the app pool account as the service account. And this is the option that uh, I'm going to choose here. And we are going to go next. This lands us on the email settings page. Here is where you can set up your email alerts. So these alerts can notify users if they uh, tracked less time than a specified amount of time, like eight hours, uh, if they didn't track time the previous day, or if it's the end of the week and they need to submit their time. These are just reminders that can be enabled, and you would enable them by checking this checkbox. And then you would need to uh, define your SMTP server here and the port that is going to be used for emailing. In this field, you will define the sender address uh, where the notifications, the email notifications are going to be sent from. For authentication here, uh, you need to enter the username of the account and the password, and you can send a test email. If you enter the username and password here, click on send test email, you should receive an email from the address that you just specified here. However, please keep in mind that if you do uh, click on this send test email, it is going to remove both of these fields and you will need to enter them again. So let's go ahead and click next. And now that the configuration has been applied, here we have uh, the option to install work item form contributions. And this will simply uh, install the seven pace time tracker time tab and the start tracking button into every work item form. So you can go to any work item and click on the, on the seven pace time tracker time tab and you can enter time there. So we are going to uh, 
select this and we are going to select all available team project collections as well as the default collection and click next to apply this to the work items forms. And now the configuration has completed successfully. So we have configured Time Tracker. We have reinstalled it, we have configured it, and it is up and running. And now the only thing that we need to check is to launch the seven pace time tracker configuration tool. And this brings us to the tool itself now where we can see the status, the time tracker status of the application. It's running. We can start it. We can stop it here. And we can change all these settings. We can change all the IS settings if we'd like, but we don't want to do that right now. We can change the DevOps server URL settings if we want to do it. So at any point after you've installed Time Tracker, you've configured it. If you need to change something, if something has changed in your company, if for instance your SMTP server has changed, or Whatever the case may be, uh, you can come here and you can change all those settings that you just configured. You can go easily, just make a change, hit save, and it will uh, update the changes. So this was an overview of the time tracker uh, installation and configuration tool we are very appreciative of your attention and we wish you uh, lots of tracked hours and a lot of uh, good times with the seven pace time tracker thank you